Beyond the Fairway podcast. It's back. It's early on a Monday morning. Will and I, we do this because we love you. It's early, Will. What it does, my friend? Man, I after the events that happened last night, I, I've been up. So, yes, yes I, I've been I hear up all, you. all night. All I morning. hear you. So, so, on tap today, Will, we got Walker Bueller coming in here. We're going to talk Dell match play. Is Tiger going to play at the Masters? But um, before we get to the golf stuff, it was a really good swing I saw last night. I, I'm not saying I condone the activity, Will, but the, the motion of how Will Smith slapped the hell out of Chris Rock at, at the Oscars was um, it was a good swing. Full rotation. It, it was, absolutely. You know, I, you know, I tell all my students, man, it's about, you know, the greater rotation, the smoother the swing. And, uh, like, <laughs> come on, man, we got to be... <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, if you ever want to, I think you, it was episode with Steph Curry, we was talking about passiveness. You know, mm. you got to be passive. You got to find you your know, four. You got to find your four. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's shoulders, arms, wrists, and hands. That's a sequence of a swing. And last night, man, was 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 uh, pure form. Can, do we have a photo? Can we can we throw it to the photo? Do we have a photo? Ooh, there it is right there. Look at wow. that. Look at, look at that. See, that right there. Hold on. Right there, Doug, before we, before we go. That right there is the completed motion there. Yes, it is. That That's is. complete motion. You know, that is a full release. The definition of swing, it must be a, a continuous motion. And that right there is is perfect. I mean, I, I think uh, that was a smack that was heard around the world. Like, no, it definitely was a smack, Will. But, and for those that are, are listening, we've got, a, we've got a picture of Will Smith fully uncoiled after contact with Chris Rock's face last night um you know I, I i'm enjoying you know the, the the position will of this this right hand of will smith i mean that if this were a golf swing he would have hit like just a little bullet draw like a low draw yeah, with that absolutely. finish absolutely. i mean he's got he's got the high right shoulder i mean look how neutral his spine angle is almost almost tilt toward the target he's got his weight on his left foot yeah hips hips mostly rotated like this yeah. is a great this is a great swing it is it is all like un- pos- it's positional all- it's all unjointed parts moving together. I mean, that, that that is a definition for the for the golf swing. I love it. And and beautiful part, man. I mean, that was that was a smack that was heard around the world. Like even even it, it even my blockchain increased. Like <laughs> my theory uh, my theory went up. Blockchain was affected by this swing. Bro, but 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 here's my thing, right? And Will, you're a comedian. I, I'm, it, I'm not a comedian. You are a comedian. You're funny. If if you're a comedic Chris Rock has to feel pretty good about the events of last night. And and for multiple reasons. But I think you said it eloquently last night, Will. If you can get a joke to land and move somebody in the crowd toward violence, you you got to be pretty damn happy about how that joke hit. Man, it, it, I that, I'd never want to get beat up like that, but if I had the opportunity to get beat up in that capacity, I mean that'd be it. I mean that 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 would be it, you know. And and uh, I mean it it did it, it served two purposes. It was a lot of it was a culture differences there, you know. And you know all my white friends called me and said, "Hey, Will, did you see Will Smith punch Chris Rock?" I'm like, "No, guys, he smacked. no, he he smacked Chris Rock." Like, I just you know we gotta make sure we we help land the culture differences there and have people <laughs> understand, you know. And and he put light skinned people back on the map too, you know, Doug, you know. Credit to you. I, I think you're capable now. I thank you. You know, I mean, light skinned guys from Philly. I didn't think they had it in them, especially at what happened to, to, to Ben Simmons. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, there was this debate for a while. Was it real? Was it fake? And I thought it was fake. I thought it was some, you know some movie coming out that they might be doing. But now that we know that it's real, um, I think Chris Rock about to get paid. Let's just be a hundred percent. No, Doug, he already declined that he's not going to file charges. No, 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 no. I'm talking about get paid as it relates to oh, oh, like next an- ancillary things. That Will Smith slapped him into relevance. Let's yeah. just be honest, man. He oh, he's de- he's definitely he's definitely got some specials coming up now. Like he he's about to go in this Kevin Hart run again. Oh Lord! Like if, if there's ever was a. Uh, uh, <laughs> If there ever was a, a debate of who who is more popular and who did it best amongst comedians, I I, if, I think Chris Rock is about to take the nod right now. Like, oh, 
Get, Nobody's ever got smacked on national television. It, it's and the, thing, the, the, it, that it, national television. That's global television. He got slapped on seven continents in forty languages. And, and the thing about it, and thing about it though, kudos to Chris Rock because he ate it, Doug. He ate that slap. He got a strong jaw. Like he his got, jaw, he, he got a lot. He got a lot of real estate on his face yeah. for sure. I, I, I don't know if Will it was it was a glancing blow, like when that ball rose up the face and you tried that flop shot and it comes up short. I don't yeah. know if Will. I, all was, I know is the, my question. My question to to you, Will. Mm-hmm. Honestly, how did Chris Rock not see that coming? I feel like he had ample time to move. Yeah, well, going back to the smack real quick, it, it, it was, there's levels in slaps. And that right there was a misdemeanor slap. That, <laughs> that was not a felony slap. He bet, and, and, I, and, I, and I understand Chris Rock, like, you know, I can't file a charge on that one. However, however, his lawyer, his lawyer could still has a, has a case. Like they, it was, it was, it was enough. Oh, but, he going Will Smith gonna have to do something for Chris Rock. I'm gonna, cause I, I'm not getting slapped on national television and not let and letting it go. I'm gonna tell you right now, and, you're not gonna and, hit me on TV and, in front of the world, and I'm gonna just look. The boy ate it. Look, <laughs> just, he ate it. And think about it though. This is this is that was a moment. I think after Chris Rock got slapped, he said a mediocre joke that still kind of landed. That's why, that's why that, that's why he's a greatest to me. He got smacked and he said, I just got smacked by Will Smith. Bro, if that wasn't the perfect time, hey, that was the perfect time. He said it's the best ratings that this show will ever have. Absolutely. So, but, but I, I will say this in all seriousness, when the production company of Will Packer, a black fam producer, you, fam you grad, fam you grad, black producer, it. I think it was poor taste in, in in Will's part to do that act when we we have a seat at the table. If that make any sense, we and have a seat he, at the table. And then he won. And then he won and, the damn and he thing. Won. And, and he took he took he took his spotlight <laughs> off of what he did, his art, because he had the audacity to go up there. He got and, a standing ovation. Him. Will got a standing ovation after slapping Chris Rock. Well, speaking of slap, speaking of slap, Scotty Scheffler, he slapped somebody on a golf course, not literally, not literally, figuratively, <laughs> at the Dale at the Dale match play out in Austin Country Club, in Austin, Texas. I didn't see uh, I didn't see Kevin Kisner not coming to play yesterday. I thought he was going to do his his bulldog thing and. And Scotty said, "Nah, bro, I'm a I'm a hometown guy. This is this is my course. I played here as a junior golfer. You're not gonna you're not gonna get me on this course, cuz." Is 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 Scotty one of the hot? Is he the hottest golfer on the planet right now? Um, I don't know, Will. It's a Monday morning. You'll hear this on Tuesday, folks. But I don't think Will has 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 heard. Scotty Scheffler, Will, is the number one player in I'm, the world. Well, I'm trying so, to set you. I try to set so, you yes. up. Yes, uh, I, I said I was setting you up. I appreciate that. Uh, That's okay. kind of you. I tell you what, somebody that we don't need to set up and somebody that I wouldn't want to see a ball come from is our next guest. It's time to go beyond the fairway with Walker Bueller. KY, baby, KY. Beyond the fairway, Dougie Fresco, Will Lowry in here, special guest Walker Bueller. Man, Walker, what's up, man? What's happening? How you been, dude? Hanging out, man. Doing good. We're out here in Phoenix trying to get ready for this season. So uh just hanging out by the pool right now. Hey, so WB, it's okay if I call you WB. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, all right, WB. <laughs> Ain't no frogs and stuff, but uh, question. Did your game get better because you had no job? Because that's, that's, yeah, that's usually how it works. <laughs> no, we were stuck in uh, stuck in Kentucky, man. It's too cold for to play. Uh, so I was, I was looking forward to getting out here and getting going because that means we get to start playing some golf, so... Uh, played in that waste management thing. I only got to play twice before it, so uh, luckily was, it didn't go too bad. Did you manage your waste around that those uh, those those that round of golf? Cause yeah, practice. we did all right. We, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, my clubs didn't get out here on time, so I had to play with my agents' agents' clubs. So my first pro am was played without my own sticks. See, let's talk about that. Let's get into it. Your first pro am there or here in town at the uh, WM Phoenix Open uh, Waste Management. I don't even know what to call it now. It was waste management. Now it's WM. I, I'm, it's just, I'm all it's over the place. Just, it's just WM. We're going to call it WM. Uh, how was it? Because, you know, you, 
you're coming into an arena that's really not yours. People are expecting you to be awesome because you're Walker Bueller. Uh, <laughs> and how how was that? You gotta give us something. Yeah, I mean, it was it was nerve wracking for sure. Luckily, we started on ten, so we kind of snuck in and got going. Um, I think if we had started on one, it would have been a little different. But um, no, it's cool. We had another Kentucky boy ran over. Justin Thomas ran over and and watched the first tee shot. So I wasn't too nervous until until he showed up over there. <laughs> so is, is who who would be one of your who's your one of your favorite players on a PJ tour? Uh, JT, just because he's from Kentucky. Uh, I've gotten to know Max Homa pretty pretty well, so uh, I've gotten to play with him a couple of times. So those are those are my two guys. So yeah, I mean you got the LA connection now. You got Kentucky, Max Homa, Justin Thomas. You know, well, I feel like we're starting to get a lot of people coming out of the great state of Kentucky, starting to <laughs> make can't. their mark in sport and in golf. I know it's annoying. But Walker, you're like our, our fourth Kentucky guest, so you got to excuse Damn. Will. He he a little shady when it comes to to bourbon drinking folks. So yeah, you know, Fair it's enough. all right. It's all right. But look, you like we, we talked about a little bit off the top. You didn't have a job. Tell me a little bit about kind of how that was from a player perspective. Kind of waiting around. You know, it's out of your control as it relates to if you get to go to work. Like, how is that? Like, what do you do? Who do you talk to? How do you stay ready to play? Yeah, I was I was actually pretty fortunate with that, just being involved in our union and, and being our rep for our team. So I had kind of the behind the scenes uh, knowledge and, and stuff to do in terms of getting on calls and, and trying to talk through some of that stuff. So, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of mornings go work out and then get on the phone for the afternoon and, and try and try and get this thing going. And, and luckily we got got it finished. And, and now we're now we're almost there. Hey, hey, Walker. I don't want no. I don't want anything. You know, politically correct right now. I want. I want the WB. What? What did? What did MLB offer that you said on your couch? Oh hell no, hell no. We ain't doing that. Come on, uh, w, let us in on one, man. Did they offer you what? You had to serve peanuts with one sock on. Uh, what what know, they, they offer? You know, we, uh, in our opinion, man, and, and kind of how the numbers work. We we've seen our game grow and and things like that and. You know, we wanted to keep our piece of that, and and you know that's that's what our job as as the union and as players is to do. So, all right, um, be, be politically correct, then. Go ahead. That was nice. That, that was, was good. Answer. That, that was, was a, that was a way to that was slide <laughs> yourself into a safe position right there. Nah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Will and Walker, correct me if I'm wrong. At the end of the day, it's still about the fans. You know, it's not that you guys were trying to not play because of you know something to do disrespectful for the fan. It's it's we right. want we want to make sure that things are in place so that that the fans get the best product possible. And and I'm assuming and correct me if I'm wrong. If was that one of the things that you you guys had to keep in your mind as you went through those negotiations? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, anytime there's a work stoppage, it it harms everyone involved, including our fans and. And that's a big deal for us, especially playing in L.A., where, where we think we have the best fan base in, in sports and, and the numbers kind of <laughs> represent that as well. So um, obviously a tough situation. And, and given where salaries are and, and you get these big numbers for, for some of these guys that have been around a long time, you know, we, you can easily understand that perspective of um, millionaires versus billionaires. But, um, <laughs> you know, on the other hand, like we didn't, we weren't on strike. Uh, we were locked out and, and that kind of is what it is and, and has all its own things, you know, that go along with it. But, um, you know, we weren't allowed to show up to the, to the facilities. It's not like we just didn't show up. So, um, you know, as, as these things go every five years, we, we keep negotiating trying to get it done, but, uh, happy to have this year on the table and, and ready to get back to work. Were, were you prepared not to play this year? Um, Ooh, that's a tough question. I don't question. think so. I think that's one of those things that, you know, you can say and feel, but as you, as you go through it, if, if that's the case, and if, if that's something that needs, needs me to take care of ourselves as players and, and the players, you know, that are going to come after us, that's obviously something that's on the table at, at any time, but, you know, fortunately, it didn't come to that, and and we're back in camp. Nice. Well, look, let's 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 talk about something because you know, reading your story and doing some research, and shout out to Lexington, Kentucky, Walker and I are from the same block. You went to Henry yeah. Clay, I went to Lexington Christian. Got but my Lexington Country Club. I see that LC, LCC is represented very well. For Will, that's like Augusta. 
like growing up. Like if you got an invite to go play LCC, it, it's, it's our version of Quail Hollow to you. So it's like you drop everything to go and play at LCC. That's that was oh. that's the spot. That's the spot. But Walker, going back to this, uh, you're coming out of high school, you got drafted. But then you're like, you know what the hell with that? I'm gonna go ahead and go to college. H how is that as, as a as an individual that you know you have this promise and guarantee for some money, you get a contract and sign it, and then you're just like, I'm still gonna go to school. What was the thought process and why you stayed and why you went to Vandy? Uh, I mean, at some point, that's such a whirlwind thing, right? You're a kid from a small state playing baseball, and, and then somebody says they want to draft you. But um, I, I think for us and, and my family, we just kind of talked through, um, you know, what it would take financially and, and uh, where I would need to pick, how, you know, how a team could make you feel valued and, and important. Um, financials are, are obviously a big part of that, especially Absolutely. when you're talking about the draft. But you know, we had kind of a number in mind and, and that didn't happen. So, um, you know, at some point, you know, going to Vanderbilt and playing college baseball in the SEC was, um, I wouldn't even say a backup plan. It's just you've got two options and, and that's the one where I felt the most comfortable and, and most valued going and doing that for three years. Essentially, you know, you, you gambled on yourself, you know, but what were some of the attributes that you possessed to where, like, I think I, I, I'm willing to forego that the MLB route right now? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything like internal. You just, you know, there's some part of you that, you know, most, most people go to college, right. Or, or have the ability yeah. to go to college. And, um, I just don't think I was ready kind of mentally to, to go and play 140 games and be on the road away from, mm. uh, family and, and <laughs> away from all my friends and stuff at, at 17 years old. I, I just don't think I was ready for that. And, um, you know, maybe had somebody given given me that money at that point in my, you know, I don't know, but um, not the decision we made and, and obviously happy with how it's turned out. All right. So you're, you're sitting there, you're representing Gray State of Kentucky, Lexi Country Club. They're on your chest. And I appreciate seeing that. It got me hype as hell in here. Like, I, I want to talk about how you kind of, you know, got into the game and balanced golf and, 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 and how did you, you know, become to this, to get to this point where it's like, damn, I love this shit. Yeah, uh, my dad was a pretty good player and, and does some commercial banking stuff. And, and I think um, growing up, he got to play with clients a lot. I think that was a big perk of, of his gig. And I think he got down to about a four for a while. And um, it was just always something that, that he had taught and, and wanted me to do and, and learn how to play. So, you know, we played a lot growing up. And, um, you know, as baseball – as, as as hitting kind of dwindled down for me and I realized I wasn't that good of a hitter, um, you kind of start picking up golf because that's the big thing. Like, oh, if you want to be a hitter, you can't play golf. So, um, oh, why is that? Why, what, what, why, yeah. why, why that? Why, what's, well, how does that even, how does that even go together? Old school baseball, you want to hit down on the baseball and golf, you want to hit up on it. So it's oh, only on the driver though, but I get it. No, what, what, well, because that's why Doug doesn't hit anywhere. You do want to hit it up with the irons as well. Just, just let you know. I don't know. Last time I checked, uh, the golf strike had a downward attack angle. I, Ooh, I don't that, know. It's, it's not a little yeah, different. It's a little okay, different. No, it's, just, it's two different swings. So everyone thought that if you, if you went and hit golf balls, you'd mess up your baseball swing. So, um, but once are you, you only throw, they, they let you play as much golf as you want. So are you, are you in the midst right now of, uh, do you have a swing coach in the golf space when you were jobless and had no job? Like, <laughs> I do. I have, I have taken two lessons in my life. I've been pretty fortunate. <laughs> Um, I took one lesson with Boyd Summerhays out here in Phoenix, and then yep. I took another one uh, when we got back to LA with George Gankus. So those are my two guys. Okay, okay. so let's let's get a little deeper. Let's get a little deeper with okay. that. All right. That's so those are two upper ends of the spectrum. Yep. You know, that's. I mean, I, I don't know. That's wild thing versus <laughs> Nolan Ryan right there. So <laughs> well, well done, Bill. I'm impressed. I, I, I appreciate I'm impressed, that. That's the little baseball knowledge I have. Okay. Um, so what philosophy? kind of tailored to your personality? Um, I definitely have kept kept in touch with, with Gankus a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, we I don't do a whole bunch of swing coaching stuff. I just try and figure out what I'm doing wrong and, and play that, I guess. All right, hold on, let's get into it. All right, so you had a chance to work with, with Mr. Scooby himself. Mm -hmm. And you, so you're in the lesson, all right? You get started. What 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 are the things that George wanted you to kind of do to get better? Because I know people that listen to this show, you know, we don't really go instruction route, but let's get into it a little bit. What'd you work on? Yeah. 
Uh, so the biggest thing is obviously trying to get, I hit a, I wouldn't, I would say in between a fade and a slice, you've seen me swing. So I kind of, I'm super steep push with a little cut to it. So, um, George had me trying to hit high draws, which is kind of what I went in wanting to learn how to do. And, um, I think the biggest thing that he did, he made me hit six irons off of like a driver height T. Hmm. That'll get you shallow. And I kind of learned how to you know, pluck it off there and hit a little high draw. And, uh, the only problem now is I'm, I'm kind of constantly stuck in between a little baby draw and that same push. So now I got two misses. <laughs> mm. So, okay. Go ahead, Will. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Doug. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to really know, I mean, you're talking about two, two, you know, world renowned coaches that both coach tour players, you know, Boyd Summerhays has a family of just elite athletes. Also Tony Finau, as we know, uh, what, what was the difference though, for you as a player working with both of those coaches between the two? Of them? Um, I think Boyd is obviously a much more traditional golf coach and, and something that had I taken lessons my whole life, I, I think would have resonated a lot better or, you know, a lot easier for me or me to kind of do what he wanted me to do. Um, uh, I think both of them were trying to just get me inside of the golf ball, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, I've only swung a golf club one way and never really learned anything different. Right. So right. No, for me to sense. try and use my hands or whatever, swing to the right to hit, move the ball left, all that kind of stuff didn't resonate as, as much as, um, with Gank is just trying to get me to spin and, and letting your body kind of take just, care of that in the out move. I love it. Um, I just yeah. think it's the, the more golf specific a coach is, the more golf specific knowledge you have to have going in, right, for it to actually resonate. And that makes sense. Um, and it's no knock on it either coach. We're not talking negative. No, Both coaches I, I think are I probably just wasn't Absolutely. good enough. I probably wasn't good enough or controlled enough to <laughs> to really get out, you know, to get as much out of, of working with Boyd as I should have. But that's the thing, though, like with Gang, because I never met the man day in my life, but Gank I follow him. And I feel like he would have me take three edibles before I go in. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he'll have me take three edibles and uh, two shots of uh, sex on the beach before I I actually take a full golf uh, golf lesson yeah. for him. I feel that's one of the requirements. But yeah. you know, so one of the things. Speaking of requirements, what is some of the requirements for me to be an owner in I guess equestrian route? Oh no, not equestrian. Not, You're talking why would you? Why would you do that? It was wow. a it's a, I mean, Lexington is a horse is a horse, right? No, I mean, it's not. Talking, no, it's two different thoroughbred race horses. Thoroughbred yeah, equestrian. Oh. <laughs> equestrian is jumping and and steeplechase. We talking about. The dirt. So, so, so no, so no horse, so no horses jump in Lexington. I'm sorry for I got it wrong, they country do. boys. My, my wife Two country boys. Like I'm I'm sorry, country boys. I didn't know. God, I mean, that, Lee. That's like calling whiskey uh, bourbon brown. It don't, it don't always match. You okay, know sorry, it's, Dad, it's on, okay. Question. All right, she whiz. Walker. What he wants to know is how you got into horse racing, man. There you go. Okay, so that's what bro, he tried I mean, to ask you. Good. Growing God. up where we did Keeneland, the big racetrack, probably. It's one of the top three horse racing tracks in the world, probably. So having that in your backyard, it's hard not to not to get involved in it. Um, my wife and I got a little more involved uh, with a company called My Race Horse that does what's called micro sharing, which is kind of a cool deal. You, we owned five, what was it, five one thousandth of a percent? Oh, like crypto, <laughs> like Ethereum. Yeah, we owned five one thousandth of one percent of a horse called Authentic. <laughs> <laughs> who won the Derby and the Breeders' Cup. So we got to go in the winner's circle and all that stuff. So you technically are an owner of the horse, but in terms of, you know, the monetary commitment, it's it's a lot less. But that's probably my uh, my pitch on, on the best way to get involved in it. If, right. if you're so, for, not. so for a while, you were, you were relying on that income. I get it. I 100% get it. <laughs> no, it's, you know, but what I think is most impressive, though, is of all the trainers, you got Bob Baffert involved with this horse, man. And then for those that don't know, Bob Baffert is like the, like the Butch Harmon of, 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 uh, trainers in, in horse racing. So that's, that's kudos to you. Mr. Who's a George, who's a George Gankus of horse racing, Doug? Oh, I don't know. Bob's my guy. So Bob's, I don't know. Um, that. I'm not Bob's the only first. Bob's the only guy I follow too much. You know, we, we can't have you come on here and not bring up some of that brown magic that comes out of our state. <laughs> of all the, of all the liquids that's out there, Walker, which one would, would we find you sipping on the most consistent? 
Uh, we're big Buffalo Trace fans in our house. Okay. Uh, um, and we drink a lot of Michters as well. So those are mm. kind of the two two companies that, that we go with the most. But I would say Bomb Burgers is probably my my favorite one in the in the cabinet right now. But all right. Uh, you know, we we enjoy it all. We've got a barrel of makers on the way. We got a barrel of blends for our wedding, so we're kind of all over the map. Which uh, okay. which 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 drink does that bird drink in the back drop? <laughs> back there, I don't know. That I think bird wild out, man. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Walker, as we wind this down, got to get you out of here. I need to know a couple things though. Number one, your pick to win the Masters this year. Who who you who you looking at right now? Um, man, I watched a tournament last week. I think JT is playing pretty good, so mm. I'm gonna have to stick stick with him. All right. He's all right. Well, it well, all let's. Hold, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Doug. Let's let's, let's do it. Go ahead. Let's get that. a pick. Let's get a pick that can bring me some money. Who is your Who is your pick to win the Kentucky Derby, uh, the Preakness, all that? Since you're, I don't know. Your, your five, can we Can we use your five thousand one percent whatever? It is? <laughs> no, get on there and buy you buy you a piece of one. No, I I don't I haven't followed it too much this year just because they're kind of doing. You know, some there's some tough things going on with with my boy Bob right now. So, I'm kind of wait until till he's back in the game, and and then we'll pick it back up. He's gonna have eight horses in the Derby anyway, Will. So he he'll be he'll be just fine. Walker, we appreciate you stepping here, going beyond the fairway with us. But we got to send you out of here the only way that we know how, <laughs> and we call it Rap Foursome right here okay. beyond the fairway golf channel and be. You're going to go play golf with four rappers. So you're playing a five. You, four rappers, dead, of, dead or alive. Don't care if they Rap. play golf. Yep, don't care if they play golf. Oh. I don't care what they are. I just want to know who you're going to pull up to the course with to go out there and have a good time. Uh, I'm trying to think of any. Obviously, I think Snoop Dogg from uh, Starsky and Hutch would be a fun one. Okay. That okay. specific specific Snoop Dogg. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah, got, he got facets. One. He's multifaceted. All right. <laughs> uh, who's Snoop Dogg? I don't know, man. There's not a whole lot of rap golf crossover. I'm trying to find some. No, it's about who you who you here. listen to, who you vibe with. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna help you out here. All you right. know what? So you just gotta give me four cats. That's like, all right, Snoop Dogg. I need three more. They don't have to play golf. It's not about golf. Okay. It's about I grew who up, you listen I grew to. I grew up a big uh, grew up a big Eminem fan. Okay. I put him in there. Eminem. That's two. two I'd solid. like to see a. I'd like to see a notorious B.I.G. golf swing. I think that would be a kind of a sight to see. Okay. Um, I don't. I, I don't think hate for, that. For a little fun on that course for us, we put Machine Gun Kelly in there, That's just perfect. to have him and Eminem have to play together. Yes. That, and also note, perfect. you are the first individual that suggested two white people in the Rap Forcing group. So, I'm impressed, and, bro. I'm no. impressed. That's first, first machine, and the first Machine Gun Kelly reference that we've got. So that is true. I, we, I don't well, know. We have I a picture. I think that's more out of just the the Eminem Machine Gun Kelly beef and wanting to be there for it. I know I it's love a little it. old, but I think it would still be. So you don't you don't want to bring them together so you can like be the peacemaker. You want to bring them together so they can beef and you watch. Yeah, it. yeah. Oh, oh, Wait, I, I, I like that. Man, why, I don't hate. Watch it. me, watch me chip this in, fool. Yeah, I think it'd be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we appreciate that, Walk. Thank you so much, Walker Bueller, stepping in here, going beyond the fairway, right here, me and Will Lowry, Golf Channel NBC. Beyond the Fairway is presented by Genesis Motor America and the first ever GV70. Dynamic design and exhilarating performance. Make the game your own. And look, well, a guy that makes the game his own, Walker Bueller, Kentucky's finest. I still don't understand where you came through with the equestrian question. I get that it's horses and 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 those types of things will Ooh, but that, that's, you that's, had two guys from kentucky and you talking about equestrian it was just it, I, it wasn't I, the move i mean that's because i ain't know so i mean, I, mean just, just, I didn't know i was just, unprepared okay that's all it was i mean fourth place walker bueller in the cy young voting last season well he's already got a world series the guy's freaking under 30 i mean just a cool cat man i thank you walker for coming in here going beyond the fairway Will and myself, man, you you got a place to come chill with us whenever you want, cuz. I might even I might even be a Laker or Laker. I might even be a a Dodger fan now, because the Lakers don't. That's the only team they got in L.A. right now is, yeah, the Dodgers. Yeah, yeah, uh, that is the only team, and he's 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 probably the most valuable player in all of the sports in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's not forget though. We talked so much about last night. Let's not forget that the Lakers blew 
a a Sunday 23 point lead and lost the game. Let's just so I know there's a lot of work to be done there with that franchise, Will. But um, interesting news, Will, coming out Augusta, the Masters. It's right around the corner. And shouts out to all the females out there playing in the Augusta National Women's uh, Amateur this week. But bigger news, Will, Tiger Woods. Mm. We've talked about come. I feel like there's always a Tiger Woods comeback story, Will. We are not exempt. We are not immune. You have ex- expressed on this show your absolute frustration for these moments. I want to get your feelings and thoughts, Will. I mean, he's coming back. Is he? He's going to play. But is he going to play? He's going to play. I yeah, think he's, he's going to I think, I think gonna play, play. I think he's going to play, play. Okay, he's gonna compete. That's what you say. He gonna he gonna go out there and be. Yeah, because he he's he still thinks strategically, man. He knows he knows a course to come back to. If this is the course to come back to, this is it. He, he's gonna play. It's, it's just something about it's just something about when particular courses that you ever notice the guys on tour play well at the same course every year. Of course, and, 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 and Kevin Kisner, Kevin, Kevin Kisner. Kisner. Yeah, especially down there uh, is at Harbor Town. That's his. That's his place. Him and Boo Weekly and all those guys. But <laughs> Boo Weekly reference today. Wow. <laughs> uh, I was I was lost on my statement just now. So, um, <laughs> but yeah. So I, I'm really appreciative that Tiger's coming. You know, is it, I'm excited. Man, a lot of stuff is going on right now, and and the fact that Tiger is is coming here to 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 bless us with his presence at the Masters at the at the uh, a tradition like no other. I, I'm uh, I'm appreciative of this. It's gonna be some well, good golf. It's gonna be some good golf. But you know, in the spirit of last night's events, will I, I can't get off last night. I'm sorry. I know, I'm not prepared. I'm there too. But I want to know, like, is there anybody on tour that you think deserves an open-handed smack from Tiger Woods? Mm. You know, we saw that Will Smith knocked the hell out of Chris Rock. Oh, there's nothing more disrespectful to being slapped by a man. There's just it doesn't get more disrespectful. I mean, if you do ba- if you do backhand, maybe. If you back I, I, which, I, which, which, which would you rather get smacked backhand <laughs> knuckles or face on to where you still have an opportunity to attack no slap me with the open hand so i can come back with it if you, okay because i'm gonna be i'm gonna i'm mm, if i got backhanded with the knuckles I, I, and that's this is why i gotta give chris rock a lot of credit yeah. i don't know if i did give him credit or i should pull his car but i'm gonna give him credit because he got slapped and stayed up on national television, cracked a joke, got it through the next segment without allowing himself to be deterred by the Absolutely. events of a moment. And Absolutely. I think I think I think golfers need to take that away from Chris Rock. Like there's they always do. adversity. Adversity. There's, there's always, always going to be something will that comes out of nowhere Absolutely. and and figuratively or literally slaps the hell out of you. That is but true. But if you Doug. can just maintain, like Chris Rock, I don't know if there's better swing advice. If you can get slapped and continue on with the show in the game of golf, your scores will get lower. Look, we don't talk about, you know, teaching on Beyond the Fairway, but I think this is a teachable moment, and I think it people is. should be like Chris Rock. It is. In, 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 in golf. In, in conclusion, Doug, we <laughs> have to, I mean, still, we have to give it up for Will Smith. Congratulations to Will Smith. It's funny to me that the the night he wins for King Richard, he channeled his, 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 he channeled his Ali <laughs> and gave Chris Rock a concussion. <laughs> think of, think about that one. <laughs> I was about to go somewhere with that, but look, hey, as y'all can see, man, I'm out of here. Hey, shouts out <laughs> to everybody that rocks with us right here, Beyond the Fairway Golf Channel, NBC. Go out and drive that new Genesis GV70. We're still waiting on ours, Genesis. But it's, you know, if I get one in the, in the driveway with the big bow, I must just say thank you and I appreciate y'all. But hey, always listen, follow, subscribe. D. Douglas Fresh, Will Lowry Golf. I pointed the wrong way. But it's yeah. all good, man. We'll holler at y'all next week. That's the way Chris Rock was pointing. <laughs> After he got slapped. He, he, hey, he, read, he, he, read, he read his cue cards like this. Um, uh, hey, um, he, he exited stage left. Don't nobody do that. Hey, he, he, <laughs> hey, he, me, hey, he messed up all the rocks. Like, he put all rocks back. He put Tony Rock back. He put... But, but the, what if... Hey, hold what on, if, hold on. What he if put, the rock was there, though? The rock was there. He, he put the rock back. He put... He put...
Chris Rock. He he put he put uh Kid Rock. He put all the rocks backs. <laughs> but I'm saying, would Will Smith have slapped the Rock? Like, what if the Rock was doing that joke? Dwayne yeah. Johnson. Would Will Smith have yeah. have taken that approach? I don't know. Yeah, he that was a respected person. He he knew he could get away with that one. He said, "Man, I know." He said, "You look like a snack right now, Chris Rock. Come here, bye yeah. out." Yeah, he he uh, full extension. Yeah, he 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 knew who he knew who it was. He knew who who he was going to. There's this no me, way. This is me smacking you. 